Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP0 playthrough playing uh, Race into Space where we race against these fine competitors uh, and as you can see the Diamond has taken the leader flag back because uh, he did the first uh, EVA in space and in the last episode uh, if you missed things we successfully sent one of our two Venus probes on its way to Venus uh, we also um, <laughs> completed some other contract with the second Venus probe because we had yet another failure. Um, but we did manage to get some good contracts out of it. Um, so, yeah, we also... Um, we've also now redesigned Bug 4 to be the first communication satellite, which requires an 850 by 4500 kilometer orbit, as you can see right here. Um, oh, I didn't actually take the contract. I guess I should take the contract. Um, convenient. I think we can take that too. Because we're going to do that next. We're doing an EVA where we have to reach orbit with a perigee above 150 kilometers so yeah we might as well get an additional um, 13 and a half million advance and 13 and a half million completion because we're totally gonna be in that orbit a long time let's go ahead and grab that all right. We're going to get lunar heat shields in 52 days. We're going to get some very nice things very soon. Well, not that soon, but soon enough. Uh, and then finally, 165 days after we get lunar heat shields, we will get, um, we'll get our, f <laughs> at long last, our first rocketry upgrade node. And then we'll get Hydrolox engines a little while after that. Um, and then we'll get all these other things. Man, really need to increase the research rate. But I need to keep enough funds in reserve for unlocking all the expensive things that we're going to unlock. So let's go ahead and launch our EVA, um, which is also going to be a rendezvous mission. So fingers crossed. I'm also going to duplicate this just in case it fails. Oh, and we might need a couple more pilots. Uh, Frances Boyd. She seems like a good pick. She 
She has low stupidity and high courage. She seems like an excellent pilot. Um, so, thus far we've only been flying Ludmila. Um, I'm going to fly Francis next time. Um, so that was another 10000 Another $10 million. Um, so let's go ahead and... Uh, let me quickly just make sure we don't have any expiring contracts. Um, these are all records. First comm satellite doesn't expire until 1954, late 53, mid 54, early 54, mid 53, mid 53, mid 54, and that's already on the way. Um, so we do have to launch our lunar landing mission fairly soon. But not today. Not sure I'll even bother to do that on camera because we've already done it. Um, right. Okay. What just. Oh. Crap. That was dumb of me. I hope it didn't mess up the SOI transition. Yeah, we're four days past SOI transition. We went through it quite quickly. But our... Ha! Huh, our perisithra is basically unchanged. That's great. Thank you, Bill. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and set up a fine tune. We want. So where is it going to be? It's going to be. We're there. And it's going to be here. Where's Earth going to be? Well, that's in 106 days. So that's a little more than a quarter of a rotation. So Earth is, so it's Earth is going to be about here. So we definitely want to be on the earthy side of Venus if we can help it. which means we want to come in on the... So Venus... I can't remember which way Venus rotates even. Does it rotate retrograde? Or is that something else? I don't know. Anyway, we want to come in on the, the outer side of it. And I think we're not right now. So let's go ahead and set up a fine-tune because we want to fine-tune closest approach to target. 200 kilometers. That's in 29 days. Alright, so we'll fine tune right there. And let's go ahead and go back to space. Oh, right. Before we do that, whoops, oh, I guess I still have Steam open. Sorry, guys. Um, we're going to observe one of these puppies. Man, look at that signal delay go. Seven seconds. Uh, and we're going to transmit it. Um, do I want to do that? It's 18 science. Do I want to risk putting this in Venus's atmosphere to get another sample, especially with that seven second delay? Uh, probably not. I don't think I'm going to risk this probe putting it through Venus's atmosphere. 
So let's just get that science. Um, where's my... Oops, wrong one. I wanted this one. Because I bet we have a bunch of experiments. Yes, we do. All right. don't think remote tech ever fixed the bug with time warp and com so if even if I time warp here it won't um, it will do a fat lot of nothing but I am time warping just so we go on rails Finally. Right. Now this happy little probe can go back to being a happy little probe. And we'll deal with it later. Man, it's going to want fine tuning right during our. Okay, just shot, yeah, right during our Eagle 3 mission, it's going to require. Okay, roll it out. <laughs> yep, right during the mission. So here's what we're going to do. Because it doesn't actually matter much when you perform a maneuver as long as you're fairly close because we are in solar orbit we're just going to perform the maneuver now so it doesn't bother us uh... Sir 2 probe, what was that? oh that's that uh... that's the upper, I think we can toss it now yeah, I could flag these as debris but I'm just not going to bother I'm aware that the biological sample isn't done yet. Um, okay. So we'll turn SIS off. Wait seven seconds. Come on. Oh, now the delay is 29 seconds because we're way further away. RCS is instantaneous, apparently, so that's fine. Or possibly all basic flight controls are instantaneous, I don't know. Looks like all basic flight controls are instantaneous. It's just actions that take a while. Let's look at what happens to our Venus approach. Oops. And 
I can't tell what side of Venus we're coming in on. Probably the wrong one, because that's how this usually works. Yes. Alright, let's get real close. Alright. Let's look at Venus. Alright, that will do for... whoops! What's going on here? Alright, that will do for now. Um, Look at how aligned we are for solar panels. Decently. Not bad. Alright. Let's put SAS back on. Now. looking at this. Wish we could focus on this instead of the other one. Looks like we're still on the wrong side of Venus. Looks like we're going to be on the non... Oh, oops. I bet the SAS signal was never actually sent. Yeah, because we... um. We changed to map mode, so it fell against the input lock. Um, so we've got to stay in this mode for another 20 seconds. Um, so, basically... Now at least SAS is on. All right. So basically, I want to perform a maneuver such that well, let's look at our conix modes and see what happens. That's not actually helpful. I believe we're on Connex 3. Alright. And this shows us looking like that. Now, what I can't remember is um, which side we want to be on this representation of Venus so that we're on the correct side on this representation of Venus. Uh, does anyone in chat remember what I'm supposed to do? Because I don't. Um, Add a maneuver and see what happens. Uh, 
Okay. So the problem with doing this is again, I can't tell which way we're going. Is the PE ever going to pop out of it? Yes, PE is popped on the right side of it now. Okay. But we obviously don't want to spend that much. Or is that just an artifact of... What is my PE like? Alright, so we want to burn a little bit retrograde until we're sure that this is aligned correctly. Because right now it looks like the PE is behind Venus. Um, although, when is that again? Venus, 80 days, so a little less than a quarter turn. So let's put Earth at the top. So Earth is going to be right here. So we definitely want to be on the outside and Yeah. All right. I think this is good. But I obviously don't want to pay that much um, to perform that maneuver. So we're just going to burn very, very gently and see when the P pops. i to wait for SAS to turn off. I'm not sure if anybody else is playing the signal delay on. Um, if they're not, I might turn it off too, because it's obnoxious sometimes. Um, if they are, I'm happy to leave it on. Okay. Now let's orient prograde. Oh, sorry, retrograde. So we want to use the thrusters. On my tutorial campaign, I played with signal delay off because I can't, I don't have it in me to bother to um, to write KOS stuff or also because the PID is so broken in remote tech, you can't really trust it to do stuff. Um, all right, we'll just have MacJab Linus retrograde. Now let's watch what happens. Let's turn that puppy off. And uh, I think we focus on this and look at what's look at what's happening. All right, I guess we're actually already on the right side of Venus because that isn't doing a fat lot of much. It's just moving it in and out this way. So, so we're right back where we started. All right, I count myself satisfied. Are we getting any solar power here? Yes, we are. Excellent. All right, let's turn SAS back on, and now we'll go deal with Eagle. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to set a an alarm for. Uh, 12 days before SOI change so that we really get a close look. We still have plenty of propellant, so we still have plenty of delta V. Um, okay. Back to Space Center and Prepper launch. All right, 
let's wait until the rollout's complete. Okay. Now, I'm going to save just in case. And we're going to launch Eagle 3. Francis Boyd. Now, we have to perform a rendezvous, a spacewalk, and a duration. The duration record doesn't care about altitude. First EVA doesn't care, just a minute on 150, perigee, that's fine. Where's orbital flight crude? All right, periapsis above 190 and apogee below 535. We'll be able to do that, that's fine, for a day and a half. We're gonna be up here for th three, so whatever. Uh, are the pumps on? pumps are on. Alright, so we want to target um, Selene 5 lunar, f lunar plane check set as target all right. Launch into plane of target 18 hours. All right. So this will probably be another night launch, which I really don't like, but it is what it is. All right. Let's look at all this. This all looks fine. This does not look so fine. Um because that upper yeah. Um, we need to be a, above 150 kilometer perigee. Uh, let's try that. We're going to have to down pitch a fair amount, but we have plenty of delta V, so we should be fine. All right, I think those numbers make sense. Engage to autopilot. Man, so close to an evening launch, but no. Now, if we really were keen here, we would try to launch to intercept, but um, we're not going to. Up we go. Let's silhouette ourselves so I can see. Now what I do not like is the fact that um, our relative inclination is 0.3 degrees, which is going to be a pain to correct once we're near orbit. I can try steer correctively, but that may make things even worse. And we have plenty of delta V. We have like 400, we have 417 meters per second, so we're fine. That's not really a concern.
Where is the thing we're trying to... The thing what we are trying to rendezvous with? Along this orbital plane. It's there. What else is in the, this orbit? Is there anything that's slightly behind us? No. Well, that's a shame. Probably going to need to launch to a fairly high phasing orbit. Maybe should have waited another day. We'll see. not going to be fun to rendezvous with. What is its orbital altitude, anyway? Selene 5, 330. Um, where's Lunar? 235. All right. So we can either go low or go high. I think I would rather go high because we'll have excess capacity on the upper stage and then we don't have then we can only have to use this to break. Sorry that it's a night launch. Okay, 7 6 Five, four, three, two, and cut off. Upper ignition. Okay, looking good. Let's jettison the abort tower. All right, we're going to pitch up just to make sure our perigee is over 150 kilometers. And then we'll go level. All right. Let's actually pitch right level. We're going to have to pitch down anyway, eventually, but we can stave that off for as long as possible by going straight on level. Oh, uh, we lost our target. Wonder why. Where is... Okay. Hey, the relative inclination's coming down. That's nice. Let's pitch down a little bit. Oh, we lost our target because of the show ascent. That's... I always make that mistake. All right, so our phasing orbit is going to involve uh, a fairly high apogee, like 500 kilometer apogee, if we can hack it. Let's go back to level. Yeah, we have plenty of delta B. That is for sure. All right, slight up pitch to bring it level. Let's do this. OK. 
Okay. Uh, a little too far. That's okay. We can we can fix that. All right. Let's let's break a little. We have to lower the apogee down to within the limits of that contract. Five thirty-five. And we're at 630. So we have to lower it 100 kilometers, which will be more expensive than I would like. Um, let's look at a home and transfer. How long is it going to be? One day, five hours. 1522? I find that very hard to believe. That's simply impossible. So we'll waste, we wasted about 20 meters a second. No, 30 maybe? All right, that's cool. One day, 18 hours. Oh, I know what's going wrong. What's going wrong? is we will be <laughs> we're not in a circular orbit we're in a phasing orbit but we're in a particular kind of phasing orbit so in one day in like 16 hours I'll lower the orbit back down some because this is intersect one and that's intersect, yeah. So we're basically on the opposite side of everything from our target. Um, change plane, match planes with target. We're gonna have to do this anyway. All right, so we're gonna have to expend, we're gonna have to spend that. Um, let's get our EVA over with so that the duration record can proceed. Oh, perigee above 190. I did not notice that. All right, well, we'll fix that at, I thought it was 150. Well, it's fine. Uh, change periapsis to 190 at the next apogee. How expensive is that gonna be? 28 minutes, 29 minutes. All right, let's we're going to we're going to actually combine our Let's see. That's 10 meters per second. Change in uh match planes with target next A and D N with target uh plus 10. We're going to combine these maneuvers because we're nearly at apogee there. Convenient. All right, let's line up. Oh yeah, and we were supposed to get our EVA over. So we might as well get our EVA over while we're waiting for this. Um, we just check the EVA contract. Uh-oh. Rendezvous to craft and orbit completed because we were near the upper stage, I guess. That's, that, Pap, if you're listening, that's a contract bug. Um, <laughs> So I don't actually have to perform the rendezvous. I'm going to anyway, because it would be terribly cheaty if I didn't. Um, but yeah, I think that's, a, that's, a, that's an issue.
Should we do it on the light side? I guess we should probably do it on the light side. Or almost to the light. Now we're in the light. All right, so let's go ahead and do our EVA. Francis Boyd is going to be the third human being to do a spacewalk, unless Lou Diamond has done a second EVA. Hey, look, no flames. EVA report. Okay, bore the vessel. She's going to stay tethered. Review stored data. Transmit. It's going to take a while to transmit because EVA data is there's a lot of data. real life that would probably be a two hour EVA of which like an hour and 30 minutes would be preparing and then getting back inside. Although this thing is so tiny it doesn't actually have an airlock so it's basically just depressurize open the hatch <laughs> try to crawl out which you can't actually do um, yeah I should disable EVA on this pod that would, that would be much fairer um Come on, EVA, finish transmitting. Meanwhile, I'll line up with Apogee, with with the the burn vector. Oh, son of a gun! We lost comm, so we'll have to transmit the data all over again. We'll get comms with Australia soon. All right, one minute and 20 seconds. All right, fairly short burn. Let's get this down. Oops, we're burning a bit early. All right, that's close enough. All right. We have comms, so let's transmit the data again. Oh, wait, no, maybe the transmission did finish. Nope. All right, I think it broke. All right. EVA report. Get that, reboard, Tr try transmitting again. Okay, we're going to spin ourselves around the opposite way. Oh good, we'll be in comms for a while. Alright. That will do. 87%, 89, 90. Why is it stuck it up? There we are. Done. All right. Now this should have... Yep, it checked. Okay, now we just have to return home on that. Now we have to... Three days. We have two days and 23 hours left. 
And on this one, we have a day and like six and change hours left, I think. Orbiting one. All right. So we still have to do the run. We still have to do the rendezvous, even though we apparently don't have to do the rendezvous. Um, I mean, we could just go back and rendezvous with our upper, but that seems cheaty. That seems extraordinarily cheaty. Um, so we still have that thing targeted. Let's look at home and transfers again. One day, ten hours. All right, let's try messing around with the delta v here. There, that's a pretty good rendezvous, actually. It's pretty decent. That wasn't hard, was it, Mac Jep? Wrong way. Okay, what's our separation there? 1.4 kilometers. Interesting, Mac Jep didn't find that one. Relative speed, 160. All right, so we're definitely going to keep that node. Um. Hopefully that doesn't... Oh good, it's far enough that that contract will complete anyway. So, yep, we're going to go ahead and warp to that. Um, where's the maneuver? I want it to let me warp to maneuver. Oh well. Um, so we'll warp manually. Five, four, three, two, one, twenty-three, twenty-two, twenty-one, twenty, nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fifteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten. Four hours to go. Three hours to go. Two hours to go. One hour to go. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Okay, five minutes to go. We'll come out of warp. And let's look at... Okay, so that's completed. And for our three-day record, how long do we have to go? Another day and a half. That's fine. All right, SAS to off. Let's reorient. We are near... Uh, well, that's fine. We already, com we already completed that other thingy, so even if we lower our perigee now, it should be fine. So now Francis Boyd is going to attempt to rendezvous with this thingy. The uh, spent stage from... I believe the Scythera 1 mission. Now, ideally, we dock with something, but we don't have docking ports. We're just going to do a rendezvous. I would have her get out and, like, look at it and stuff, but sadly, we that would reset the crew duration record, I believe. So we can't do that. So I'm going to keep this part visible, where the that is.
is. Oh, I think I, yeah, I can right click it. Awesome. Forgot about that. So basically, in case you were wondering what was going on, because I didn't actually explain this, what I did was I basically used MechJeb's Home and Transfer tool just to tell us when we would approximately be in sync. Then I manually created the uh, transfer orbit because MechJeb wasn't quite doing it right. All right, now we're going to clean things up manually. Let's bring that down. 400 meters seems good enough for anybody. Oops. Let's get a little closer. 400, oops. 400 meters. All right. Great. So, now let's go ahead and match velocities with target at closest approach. It's in an hour and 10 minutes. It's going to be a fairly expensive burn, and that will conveniently leave us with just the right amount of delta V to deorbit. Man, that actually worked out well. I'm happy. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and warp until we're about five minutes away again. Let's look at this count go down. Still one day, 12 hours, that's fine. So we're going to be in this orbit for another day and a half next to the stage. I mean, I'll probably pull us slightly away from the stage just to be sure we don't hit it um, once we rendezvous with it. So I don't want to mess around. Oops, right, it was going to be five minutes, but it's three minutes. That's fine. We'll just rotate quickly. All right, so now, let's see if we can pick it out visually as I try to perform this maneuver. We're going to burn a little early because we want to finally control our approach. There it is. 26 kilometers away. Whoops. Okay, I'm manually going to control this, I think. Um, wait, is our closest approach not as close as I wanted it to be? Rendezvous planner. Four, four, all right, so we are actually going to get quite close. It's just going to take us a little while. All right, I think I want to start burning now. And our goal will be to keep the retrograde indicator aligned with target minus. So we're going to push it back like this. Okay, now it's aligned quite closely. Well, close-ish. All right. So basically we're raising our perigee and lowering our apogee to match this orbit as we're matching velocity. Our Sparky C, this mission involves a spacewalk, a rendezvous, and a duration record. Because why launch more than one craft when you don't have to? All right, now let's coast until we're a little closer. We're still closing at 36 meters per second. Uh, Tenevas says, Cax encounter alarm is good for trimming encounters. I should try that. I've never actually used that. 
And of course, we're just about we're we're going to rendezvous right as we go on the night side, because that's how life works. Three kilometers, two kilometers. All right, so we are now within a kilometer of things. So let's push it back. to alignment but we don't want to align too closely because I don't want to hit the thing all right all right so we're closing at two meters a second we're gonna get quite close under 400 meters, 300 meters, and we're on the night side now. Crew report. How nice. We actually, if I hadn't have done this rendezvous, I probably wouldn't have gotten crew report over the mountains. That's nice. All right. Now let's look at our alignment. Up, oh, we entered physics range. That was its set motors igniting and then running out of fuel and not actually producing any delta V. We have entered physics range with what we're rendezvousing with. So that's great. So we're going to slow our roll a little bit here. So we used a little more delta V than I thought we would because I'm fine-tuning this approach. Um, but that's acceptable to me. We'll still have plenty to actually deorbit acceptably. This pod has good enough heat shields. Um, gradually getting close. All right, I think this was enough to demonstrate the practicalities of rendezvous. We're not going to try to get closer than this. So we're going to get the heck away. Success. And get it out of physics range. Um... Okay, so we need to stay in this orbit for another day, I believe. One day and 11 hours. Alright, so we're no longer worrying about that thing. And we are going to warp for another day and a half. Sorry about the flickering. Alright, two hours to go. No, three hours to go to beat this record. Okay. We're good. Now let's go ahead and set up our retrofire, which is going to land us in the South Pacific. All right. Should be good. Now, what's our life support situation looking like? Where's the tackle S button? Why is... That's odd. Isn't there usually a tackle S button here? 
Oh, because we're in Matthew? Yeah, because we're in Matthew. Okay. Uh, we have a day of oxygen and a half day of food and water, so we're fine. How are we doing on electric chart? Oh, we completed duration record and got mucho money. How are we doing on electric charge? We still got some electric charge. We still got 40,000. So 40 mega... Uh, 40 megajoules. No. 40,000. Um, yeah, 40 megajoules. That's right. Alright, let's warp ahead to Retrofire. for retrofire. I think we want to be firing slightly down. Well, whatever. We'll, we'll align about like this. It's fine. Alright, good that we're firing near perigee. perigee. Alright. Oh, I have to merge that patch. I believe Thayson fixed the plume on that. about right. Okay. Now I want to check on the electric charge in this. 30,000 units. That must mean we've used up this battery, yes? No. Why did we... Why is it in the wrong stage? Huh. The flow priorities were messed up. Alright. Well, whatever. So we'll use that electric charge first. But we still have plenty of electric charge. <laughs> yeah, once again we're flying over Australia, which is making Tanua hungry for Vegemite. Always hungry for Vegemite. Oh, are we going to luck out? Yes, we are. We actually might end up, we might actually end up landing in Australia, now that I think about it. Not super sure. We might get flying high over desert. That'd be cool. Alright, let's reorient. We want surface mode. We still have a bunch of delta V in the, in the service module, so that's fine. Interface. And let's ditch the service pack. Roll level. Plenty of electric charge. We haven't touched our high test peroxide yet. And we're going to come streaming in over Australia. Uh, it is just vaguely possible that we'll land in Australia rather than the ocean. I did my retro burn a little early, I think, because this is a fairly sharp descent. Eh, only one degree entry angle. It's not that sharp. We'll see how it goes.
Oh, we got a crew report flying high over desert, I guess. Yeah, all right. Well, that was Shores. Yeah, all right. Well, whatever. We're not going to hop out and do an EVA now. I'm not that insane. Oh, yeah, our Spark Easy points out that this does this does technically have um, descent mode. So let's do that. And pray that it doesn't... Um, Pray that it doesn't cook the parachute. Uh, Pap, the rendezvous contract completed um, during launch. I think probably because we staged away the the um, upper stage, which had avionics in it, so it counted as another vessel. So it counted as, as us rendezvousing. I think probably the way you might want to fix that is put a requirement of like orbit for an hour beforehand and that objective must be completed first, and then you can complete the rendezvous objective? Uh, not sure. That might be something to ask Nightingale about, how to avoid that eventuality, because I'm not immediately coming up with that. And KSP is not a problem, because everything under you is usually debris. But here... Um, well, different... Bill, is the launch ID going to be different for um, if you decouple a lower stage? Isn't it? It's is it going to inherit your launch ID or or launch ID, not craft ID? Yeah, that would work. Yeah, uh, hopefully contract creator will check for that. If it does, pap, that's the way to go. If not, then the fact that we both had that idea implies it's probably a decent idea to use the thirty-minute hour or whatever delay. Um. Oh, we're going to be fine. I might switch back to ballistic, but who knows. Cheers, Pat. Yeah, so this is basically totally a Gemini mission because we're, we tested EVA, we tested rendezvous, we tested on-orbit maneuvers, and now we're testing a lifting re-entry. <laughs> so we'll be all set for the next capsule. Still above the Carmen line. Still not getting any signs. Warpity warpity warp. Man, that lifting reentry is doing a number on things. Our descent rate is decreasing despite the fact that our velocity is going down quite quickly. And, well, we cleared, you say we cleared Australia, but there's that extra bit. And there goes the service module.
kaboom. Uh, Bill says it's Cape York. All right, so we're going to be smack dab in the Pacific. This is going to be a remarkably gentle reentry. Back over the shores again. Crew report. Quick, send the crew report. Ah, and there is Cape York below us, I would guess. We even got a little extra science from that. All right. Still at 74 kilometers. We're leveling out. We have not used much up later at all. Uh, are those mountains the Philippines? Uh, plausibly. No, that that's that must be New Guinea. We can't be looking. Oh, right. Are those? No, I think those mountains might actually be. Let's see. What would we actually be seeing? I that might be, I think I that must be New Guinea. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Okay. The Philippines not mountainous so much, I don't think, but New Guinea is fairly mountainous. There was a lot of mountain and jungle warfare in World War Two there. Alright, we're approaching approaching level out point. I think that's New Guinea. No. Yeah, okay, now I think you can see the Philippines in the distance. Alright, now our descent rate's increasing again, so we leveled out as much as we could level out. Getting a little hot, but not that hot, I don't think. It should be fine. <laughs> Biome hopping. But it's always gonna it's it's always gonna say EVA report unless I hop out and get the EVA report. So it's tempting to go to like 138 kilometers, hop out, get the aviator report, just so it would shut the heck up. But that is horrifically unrealistic. Man, we've slowed down a lot already. Forgot how effective lifting reentries are, even on a pod shape like this. Our Spark EC suggests a balloon, yes. Um, yes, a balloon seems like a, a much more reasonable idea for going into above 50 kilometers and getting an EVA report. Now we're only getting a little tiny bit of flames up here at 64 kilometers. It's 
the gentlest reentry on record. 1.4 G's. I wonder if we're even going to pass like 2 G's. So, we'll see what our max Q on reentry is. What are we passing over now? Is that the Solomons? Uh, yeah, that's probably Solomons. I think so. Man, my Pacific geography is pretty poor. Whoop, whoop. Uh, oh, it does bad. The parachute's heating up, so we're going to have to switch to ballistic, which will shoot our Gs up through the roof. But if the parachute blows, it's all over. Even ballistic RGs aren't going to be that. What the heck just happened? That? Okay, that's a bug. Exploded due to overheat. That is definitely a bug in RO. If that re-entry hurt the pod. That definitely seems like a bug. Because there should not be that much transference to the internal pot pod temperature based on the heat shield doing its job. Um, huh. Now that was a shallow re-entry, but it wasn't that shallow a re-entry. I mean, if I had had a, like, a perigee of about 80 kilometers, that would be expected. Um, or rather, the heat shield would wear through. Um, that re-entry with a perigee of 4 kilometers, even a lifting re-entry, that means we have a config error. So, yeah. Um, we're going to be right back and do that as a ballistic entry, just to fix it now, and then on my own time I will figure out what the heck is going on wrong with the heat. I've n To be fair, I was going to say last night... Um, because last night I was trying out a space plane and I've noticed that a design that worked in 1.1.3 was blowing up really soon so I'm wondering if something changed in terms of heat um, that we haven't dealt with yet because I think we're, we're back to getting too much heat from re-entry um, because yeah alright so let's load that quick save Hope that the contracts... No, so our Spark EC, like, you didn't do it. Like, it's entirely plausible that um, it would have blown on an even a non-lifting re-entry, actually, just because of how weird the... All right, got to figure out what the heck's going wrong with that. All right, let's make sure all these things... Oh, I only saved here. Well, that's obnoxious. Um... But that's fine. I think the rest of them completed fine. Uh, well, I guess good I saved it all. Because that's that was really pretty screwy. Um, oh, let me check the last... Make sure all the contracts... Yeah, okay. Um, All right, we want three days. Oh yeah, and I forgot that I also need to change the flow priorities because might as well take advantage of that. Um, 18, 19, 20, 20. All right, I believe that that is sufficient. We got the duration record. Now let's get home as fast as possible. Uh, we're actually already 
positioned sufficiently for retrofire, so let's just do it here. And yeah, I'm going to expend this blowfish right. I'm going to expend the service module and have a fairly steep high G, low heat load reentry. All right, we're going to burn slightly below retrograde. Yeah, it will be a it will be a because our entry angle will be about a degree and a half, and that's still going to be a lower G loading than ascent. You're right. Let's figure out what the heck is going on later. That would explain because last night and the night before I was trying my space plane. I'm like, okay, maybe I just have too high a ballistic coefficient. I don't have enough lift, so I put on like ginormous wings, way larger wings than I've used before on space planes, and it was still blowing up quite quickly. So I do think that there's something screwy with the heat. We'll have to re-verify mercury descent and make sure the heat load is correct. Um, all right. Oops, ah, we need to... Get above... Oh, yeah. Well, no, I'm not going to quick save here because... Um, it's possible that this descent is now too steep. Although I highly doubt it. I guess I could fix it with hyper -edit if I really wanted to. So yeah, I'll quick save here. Thank you, chat. Oh, our Sparky C. That could well be it. Let me let me check that. Um, we're reentry heating 100%, so it's not that. Oh yeah, and I'll, I am going to need this. Well, no, I don't actually need the save for testing. What I need is a FASA install in that save, um, because the way it has to be verified is actually with a genuine mercury pod, because we actually know the heat load for mercury's reentry, and I give it exactly the orbital parameters of a mercury reentry, and then I check and see if the heat load comes out right. Um, and as of 1.1.3, it did. I spent an inordinate amount of time doing that, um, but it's, it seems to be off now. Okay. I'll just let MacJib keep us aligned. And now, accelerating like this is going to change things a little bit, but it shouldn't change things much above the Kármán line, because we're really not taking much heat in. That was weird. That was super weird. Um, I mean, it sounds like more what the issue actually was, was um, skin to internal conduction rather than, so, but that shouldn't, oh, wait, I think I might have subtly rewritten conduction for 1.2. I can't even remember what I did at this point, but it may, <laughs> it may actually be my fault in the end for changing how thermo worked a little bit. Um, I know somebody asked me recently, maybe Star Warster asked me recently whether I changed anything in 1.2. I didn't think I did, but um, I don't think it w it's not on deadly reentry because we f we set all the parameters ourselves. Unless deadly reentry itself modifies skin to internal conduction, and we don't, in which case, um, oh, whoops, I should be paying attention. Uh, in which case, that would explain things. But 
that's our entry angle, two, two degrees. Um, it's probably 1.8 when we hit interface. Um, Right about where we would have landed the last time. It's getting hot. Four G's. And we're still at 56 kilometers. That's not a charming prospect. Yeah, I, I do have deadly reentry 7.6. I will look and see what the what it does to the Mark One pod, and whether what it's do when it changed what it was doing to the Mark One pod. Um, why is MechJeb constantly trying to pitch us? That's weird. There, we're just a little out of alignment. It looks like. All right, so that went fine. We didn't even use that much ablator, but it was a. Yeah, it looks like we just uh, seven. Yeah, we just barely got lower G loading than um, still one and a quarter G's lower than the actual Mercury descents. Um, all right. Let's turn that off. Give us the actual Mercury descent had like I think. 5 degrees per second roll, I forget, 15, something, I think it was 5, um, just for even, for even slow roasting. Um, Alright, now let's get down to parachute altitude. Technically we should have dumped our high-test peroxide, but I don't actually care. Sob story, define full orbital space flight now, because We've sent the probe to Venus, and this was our first rendezvous in EVA mission. So, I'm not sure what counts as full. Down to about five kilometers. Scatter of water is so pretty. And drogue out. Oh, yeah. Um, so we first put a human being into orbit uh, about two months, no, three months ago? I forget. It's in like two episodes ago, maybe three episodes ago. And the main fully deploys. Kilometer. Ars Park EC, no, I do not dare to go on EVA and get a flying low sample because I'm <laughs> I'm at least vaguely trying to be realistic in this career. Like, for example, sending up the test flight of Eagle One instead of just sending somebody up because I knew it would be fine. Um, not EVAing at 138 kilometers to get flying high science. Not EVAing down here to get flying low science. Wing walking is a thing, but we ain't gonna do it. Alright. And... 
we have Splashdown. That's quite a lot of splashing. But let's go ahead and recover. Alright, that better have a lot of flashing antenna icons. Yes, good. And we got a tiny bit of science. We got 2.3 million back for the capsule, and she advanced to level 1. Now, we got first EVA, 90 million, first rendezvous, 56 million, orbital flight 1 crew, 13.5 million. All right. So, we have a lot of money. I think it's time we started upgrading our science some. Although we are going to need the money for the tech unlocks, because they can be expensive. But I think we definitely need to sink some of that into R&D. Let's go down to 300. Well, maybe a little more. All right, Our, um, Sound and Fury is up past point four, so we need to keep pace somehow. Uh, although we will kind of frog ahead once in a little over a year when the R and D building completes. It'll actually be less than that because the VAB expansion will complete in a half year. Then we can sink some more points into build rates. We can effectively double our build rate on the cheap. Um, and now it's only 14 days to that, and that, yeah, so we shaved like, what, 20 or 30 days off these. About 30 days each. So that's cool. Um, so yeah, we can go ahead and get rid of Eagle 4. We don't actually, well, let me look and see what new contracts are available. Um, can't do that yet. And, oh, I haven't even accepted this yet. Wow, that's intriguing. All right, so I have to do geostationary, and I have to do a lunar landing. So we do need to... So what I think I will do, actually, for the lunar mission... Um, might do that might kill two contracts at once. Um, it's worth thinking about. Might do that. Uh, will we get docking ports? Because um, I might do a I might do a, an LOR mission, an unmanned LOR mission, just to do this sanely. Although, I think direct ascent is fairly sane in this case, but... Um, I don't know. Um, I definitely want to do um, a film camera mission in lunar orbit and return all of that data. Uh, so that's a possibility. The other thing that I really want to do is pick this up, because it has a two-year time limit. We'll certainly do it within two years, I think. Because we can, we can do it once we get Hydrolox engines. Um, especially because... Just check the tech tree. Um, yeah, because we get this, which is crucial. So this will be our upper stage. We're gonna make a we're gonna make a, a jury rigged Saturn one soon, I think, with an upper stage with one of these, but a, a, a jury rigged Saturn one Centaur, 
Not for stage one of these, four E1s on the first stage, and then, yeah, and then a centaur up top. They're all tens. Um, and with that, we can certainly send something on a free return. Um, so yeah, that just requires... But we can launch our... We should be able to launch our um, our lunar orbital mission using the tech we have, all Carolox and hypergolic upper. Um, the J2 is in the node after that, yes, that's correct. Um, the sad part is that the J2... So you get both the 200,000 pound force and I think the 230 KLBF one at the same node at the moment. We sort of went back and forth on whether to put the 200 KLBF one back a node. Um, oh, and I can unlock some more. I can unlock more things. None of these are actually touching our science because we. Oh, whoops. All right, general construction. Uh, let's go back to here and get the highlight back. Let's get this. I still don't understand why Hydrolox doesn't highlight. Um, we haven't unlocked that yet. That's too expensive. 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 We could just dump our science into staged combustion. Our Spark EC, yeah, no, I'll definitely, I definitely want to try that out because having a proper J2 would be great. Uh, he's talking about uh, engine mixture ratio controller. Um, and Saab, the source for the short burn time is because it was notionally spec'd out for the, the Hydrolox SLS series that the Air Force was notionally designing for Dinosaur and other, the, the, S, the, what, the SLV3 requirement, which Titan eventually filled, Titan III. Um, and that had a fairly short burn time because they only had like a two minute solid boost and then it was it was sort of an upper stage rather than actual like long burning full upper it, w it was a second stage rather than an up than a traditional upper stage um, all right so we can snag this it will give us a good instrument unit um, that said there's no particular reason why it really should have a shorter burn time. It's more just like, at that point, pretty much all US stages had short burn times. And it wasn't until like 62 or 3 that they really started considering having really long burning stages like that. Yeah, it was a fairly short burning sustainer because it wasn't ground lit. It was basically a sustainer stage that wasn't ground lit, if that makes any sense. Uh, and then you'll understand how it works. Like, comparatively high thrust. All right, let's go ahead and get this. And that uses up our science. That gives us one more upgrade point. Let's invest it. Uh, and we'll go to an even 2.4, and that'll get the buildings done slightly sooner. If four, that took four days off that. All right, so with that, I think it's time to call things to an end. Start 16. Oh, no, this was 16. I do this every time. Okay, cool. I will see you all again soon. Oh, 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 oh. I need to sync. Um, I think it synced me. Um, okay. 
so yeah um, we sync now so yeah because that should that should upload the fact that we did that rendezvous contract and all that fun stuff so see you next time Toodaloo. that um, let's get our EVA over with so that the duration record can proceed Oh, perigee above 190. I did not notice that. All right, well, we'll fix that at... I thought it was 150. Well, it's fine. Uh, change periapsis to 190 at the next apogee. How expensive is that going to be? 28 minutes, 29 minutes. All right, let's... We're going we're gonna to actually combine our... Let's see. That's 10 meters per second. Change in uh, match planes with target. Next A and D N with target. Uh, plus 10. We're going to combine these maneuvers because we're nearly at apogee there. Convenient. line up. Oh yeah, and we were supposed to get our EVA over. So we might as well get our EVA over while we're waiting for this. Um, let me just check the EVA contract. Uh-oh. Rendezvous to craft and orbit completed because we were near the upper stage, I guess. That's that pap. If you're listening, that's a contract bug. Um, <laughs> so I don't actually have to perform the rendezvous. I'm going to anyway because it would be terribly cheaty if I didn't. Um, but yeah, I think that's a that's a that's an issue. Should we do it on the light side? I guess we should probably do it on the light side. Oh, we're almost to the light. Now we're in the light. All right, so let's go ahead and do our EVA. Francis Boyd is going to be the third human being to do a spacewalk, unless Lou Diamond has done a second EVA. Hey, look, no flames. EVA report, 535, and we're at 630. So we have to lower it 100 kilometers, which will be more expensive than I would like. Um, Let's look at a home and transfer. How long is it going to be? One day, five hours. 1522? I find that very hard to believe. That's simply impossible. Alright. So we'll waste, we wasted about 20 meters a second. No, 30 maybe? Alright, that's cool. One day, 18 hours. Oh, I know what's going wrong. What's going wrong is we will be we're not in a circular orbit we're in a phasing orbit but we're in a particular kind of phasing orbit so in one day in like 16 hours I'll lower the orbit back down some Because this is intersect one, and that's intersect yeah. 
So we're basically on the opposite side of everything from our target. Um, change plane. Match planes with target. We're going to have to do this anyway. All right, so we're going to have to expend. We're going to have to spend that. Um, let's get our EVA over with, so that the duration record can proceed. Oh, perigee above 190. I did not notice that. All right, well we'll fix that at. I thought it was 150. Well, it's fine. Uh, change periapsis to 190. At the next apogee, how expensive is that going to be? 28 minutes, 29 minutes. All right, let's. We're gonna. We're gonna actually combine our. Let's see. That's 10 meters per second. Change in uh, match planes with target. Next A and D N with target. Uh, all right. Oh, I have to merge that patch. I believe Tyson fixed the plume on that. about right. Okay. Now I want to check on the electric charge in this. 30,000 units. That must mean we've used up this battery, yes? No. Why did we... Why is it in the wrong stage? Huh. The flow priorities were messed up. Alright. Well, whatever. So we'll use that electric charge first. But we still have plenty of electric charge. <laughs> yeah, once again we're flying over Australia, which is making Tanua hungry for Vegemite. Always hungry for Vegemite. Oh, are we going to luck out? Yes, we are. We actually might end up, we might actually end up landing in Australia, now that I think about it. Not super sure. We might get flying high over desert. That'd be cool. All right, let's reorient. We want surface mode. We still have a bunch of delta v in the in the service module, so that's fine. Interface. And let's ditch the service pack. Roll level. Plenty of electric charge. We haven't touched our high test peroxide yet. And we're going to come streaming in over Australia. Uh, it is just vaguely possible that we'll land in Australia rather than the ocean. I did my retro burn a little early, I think, because this is a fairly sharp descent. Eh, only one degree entry angle. It's not that sharp. We'll see how it goes. Review stored data. Transmit. It's going to take a while to transmit because EVA data is there's a lot of data. real life that would probably be a two hour EVA of which like an hour and 30 minutes would be preparing and then getting back inside. Although this thing is so tiny it doesn't actually have an airlock so it's basically just depressurize open the hatch <laughs> try to crawl out which you can't actually do um, yeah I should disable EVA on this pod that would, that would be much fairer um, Uh, 
Come on, EVA, finish transmitting. Meanwhile, I'll line up with Apogee, with with the the burn vector. Oh, son of a gun. We lost comm, so we'll have to transmit the data all over again. We'll get comms with Australia soon. All right, one minute and 20 seconds. Fairly short burn. Let's get this down. Oops, we're burning a bit early. All right, that's close enough. All right. All right, and we have comms, so let's transmit the data again. Oh, wait, no, maybe the transmission did finish. Nope. All right, I think it broke. All right. EVA report. Get that. Reboard. Tr try transmitting again. Down to about five kilometers. Scatter of water is so pretty. And drogue out. Oh, yeah. Um, so we first put a human being into orbit uh, about two months, no, three months ago? I forget. It's in like two episodes ago, maybe three episodes ago. And the main fully deploys. Kilometer. Ars Barky C, no, I do not dare to go on EVA and get a flying low sample because I'm <laughs> I'm at least vaguely trying to be realistic in this career. Like, for example, sending up the test flight of Eagle One instead of just sending somebody up because I knew it would be fine. Um, <laughs> not EVAing at 138 kilometers to get flying high science not EVAing down here to get flying low science. Wing walking is a thing, but we ain't going to do it. Alright. And... We have splashdown. That's quite a lot of splashing. 
but let's go ahead and recover. All right, that better have a lot of flashing antenna icons. We have not used much depletor at all. Uh, are those mountains the Philippines? Uh, plausibly. No, that that's that must be New Guinea. We can't be looking. Oh, right. Are those? No, I think those mountains might actually be. Let's see. What would we actually be seeing? I that might. Be, I think I, that must be New Guinea. Yeah, that's that's, yeah, okay. The Philippines not mountainous so much, I don't think, but New Guinea is fairly mountainous. There was a lot of mountain and jungle warfare in World War II there. All right, we're approaching approaching level out point. I think that's New Guinea. No. Yeah, okay, now I think you can see the Philippines in the distance. Alright, now our descent rate's increasing again, so we leveled out as much as we could level out. Getting a little hot, but not that hot, I don't think. It should be fine. <laughs> Biome hopping. But it's always gonna it's it's always gonna say EVA report unless I hop out and get the EVA report. So it's tempting to go to like 138 kilometers, hop out, get the aviator report, just so it would shut the heck up. But that is horrifically unrealistic. Man, we've slowed down a lot already. Forgot how effective lifting reentries are, even on a pod shape like this. Our Spark EC suggests a balloon, yes. Um, tiny bit of flames up here at 64 kilometers. It's the gentlest re-entry on record. 1.4 Gs, I wonder if we're even going to pass like 2 Gs. So we'll see what our max Q on reentry is. What are we passing over now? Is that the Solomons? Uh, yeah, that's probably Solomons. I think so. Man, my Pacific geography is pretty poor. Whoop, whoop. Uh, oh, it does bad. The parachute's heating up, so we're going to have to switch to ballistic which will shoot our G's up through the roof. But if the parachute blows, it's all over. Even ballistic RGs aren't going to be that. What the heck just happened? That? Okay, that's a bug. 
exploded due to overheat, that is definitely a bug in RO if that reentry hurt the pod. That definitely seems like a bug because there should not be that much transference to the internal pot pod temperature based on the heat shield doing its job. Um, huh. Now that was a shallow reentry, but it wasn't that shallow a reentry. I mean, if I had had a like a perigee of about 80 kilometers, that would be expected. Um, or rather, the heat shield would wear through. Um, that reentry with a perigee of four kilometers, even a lifting reentry, that means we have a config error. So, yeah. Um, we're going to be right back and do that as a ballistic entry just to fix it now, and then on my own time, I will figure out what the heck is going on wrong with the heat. I've, n to be fair, I was going to say last night, um, do that. Oops, oh, I guess I still have Steam open. Sorry, guys. Um, we're going to observe one of these puppies. Man, look at that signal delay go. Seven seconds. Uh, and we're going to transmit it. Um, do I want to do that? It's 18 science. Do I want to risk putting this in Venus's atmosphere to get another sample, especially with that seven second delay? Eh, probably not. I don't think I'm going to risk this probe putting it through Venus's atmosphere. So let's just get that science. Um, Where's my... Oops, wrong one. I wanted this one. Because I bet we have a bunch of experiments. Yes, we do. All right. don't think remote tech ever fixed the bug with time warp and com so if even if I time warp here it won't um, it will do a fat lot of nothing but I am time warping just so we go on rails Finally. Right. Now this happy little probe can go back to being a happy little probe. And we'll deal with it later. Man, it's going to want fine tuning right during our. Okay, just shot, yeah, right during our Eagle 3 mission, it's going to require... Okay, we're going to spin ourselves around the opposite way. Oh, good, we'll be in comms for a while. All right. All right, that will do. 
Why is it stuck it up? There we are. Done. All right. Now this should have... Yep, it checked. Okay, now we just have to return home on that. Now we have to... Three days. We have two days and 23 hours left. And on this one, we have a day and like six and change hours left, I think. Orbiting one. All right. So we still have to do the run. We still have to do the rendezvous, even though we apparently don't have to do the rendezvous. Um, I mean, we could just go back and rendezvous with our upper, but that seems cheaty. That seems extraordinarily cheaty. Um, so we still have that thing targeted. Let's look at home and transfers again. One day, ten hours. All right, let's try messing around with the delta v here. There, that's a pretty good rendezvous, actually. It's pretty decent. That wasn't hard, was it, MacJip? Wrong way. Okay, what's our separation there? 1.4 kilometers. Interesting, MacJip didn't find that one. Relative speed, 160. All right, so we're definitely going to keep that node. And we're still at 56 kilometers. That's not a charming prospect. Yeah, I, I do have deadly reentry 7.6. I will look and see what the what it does to the Mark One pod, and whether what it's do when it changed what it was doing to the Mark One pod. Um, why is MechJeb constantly trying to pitch us? That's weird. There. We we're just a little out of alignment, it looks like. Alright, so that went fine. We didn't even use that much ablator. But it was a... Yeah, it looks like we just... Uh, seven. Yeah, we just barely got lower G-loading than... Um, still one and a quarter G's lower than the actual Mercury descents. Um, all right. Let's turn that off. Give us the actual Mercury descent had like I think five degrees per second roll. I forget fifteen. Something. I think it was five. Um, just for even for even slow roasting. Um, all right, now let's get down to parachute altitude. Technically, we should have dumped our high-test peroxide, but I don't actually care. Sob story, define full orbital space flight now, because we've sent the probe to Venus, and this was our first rendezvous in EVA mission. So... I'm not sure what counts as full. Down to about five kilometers. Scatter of water is so pretty. And drogue out. Oh, yeah, um, so we first put a human being into orbit uh, about two months, no, three months ago? I forget. It's in like two episodes ago, maybe three episodes ago. And 
the main. Oops, right, it was going to be five minutes, but it's three minutes, that's fine. We'll just rotate quickly. All right, so now, let's see if we can pick it out visually as I try to perform this maneuver. We're going to burn a little early because we want to finally control our approach. There it is. 26 kilometers away. Whoops. Okay, I'm manually going to control this, I think. Um, wait, is our closest approach not as close as I wanted it to be? Rendezvous planner. Four, four, all right, so we are actually going to get quite close. It's just going to take us a little while. All right, I think I want to start burning now. And our goal will be to keep the retrograde indicator aligned with target minus. So we're going to push it back like this. Okay, now it's aligned quite closely. Well, close-ish. All right. So basically we're raising our perigee and lowering our apogee to match this orbit as we're matching velocity. Our Spark EC, this mission involves a spacewalk, a rendezvous, and a duration record. Because why launch more than one craft when you don't have to? Alright, now let's coast until we're a little closer. We're still closing at 36 meters per second. Uh, Tenevas says, Cax encounter alarm is good for trimming encounters. I should try that. I've never actually used that. And of course, we're just about, we're, we're going to rendezvous right as we go on the night side. Because that's how life works. Sorry that it's a night launch. Okay, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and cut off. Upper ignition. Okay, looking good. Let's jettison the abort tower. All right, we're going to pitch up just to make sure our perigee is over 150 kilometers. And then we'll go level. Let's actually pitch right level. We're going to have to pitch down anyway, eventually, but we can stave that off for as long as possible by going straight on level. Oh, uh, we lost our target. Wonder why. Where is... Okay. Hey, the relative inclination's coming down. That's nice. Let's 
pitch down a little bit. Oh, we lost our target because of the show ascent. That's I always make that mistake. All right, so our phasing orbit is going to involve uh, a fairly high apogee, like 500 kilometer apogee, if we can hack it. Go back to level. Yeah, we have plenty of delta B. That is for sure. All right, slight up pitch to bring it level. Uh, through two probe. What was that? Oh, that's that. Uh, that's the upper. I think we can toss it now. Yeah, I could flag these as debris, but I'm just not going to bother. I'm aware that the biological sample isn't done yet. Um, okay. So we'll turn SIS off. Wait seven seconds. Come on. Oh, now the delay is 29 seconds because we're way further away. RCS is instantaneous, apparently, so that's fine. Or possibly all basic flight controls are instantaneous. I don't know. Looks like all basic flight controls are instantaneous. It's just actions that take a while. Let's look at what happens to our Venus approach. Oops. And I can't tell what side of Venus we're coming in on. Probably the wrong one, because that's how this usually works. Yes. All right, let's get real close. This probe's on its way to Venus. Uh, we also... Um, <laughs> completed some other contract with the second Venus probe because we had yet another failure. Um, but we did manage to get some good contracts out of it. Um, so, yeah, we also... Um, we've also now redesigned Bug 4 to be the first communication satellite, which requires an 850 by 4500 kilometer orbit, as you can see right here. Um, oh, I didn't actually take the contract. I guess I should take the contract. Um, All right. 
and well that's convenient I think we can take that too because we're gonna do that next we're doing an EVA where we have to reach orbit with a perigee above 150 kilometers so yeah we might as well get an additional um, 13 and a half million advance and 13 and a half million completion because we're totally going to be in that orbit a long time. Let's go ahead and grab that. All right. kilometer. Ars Barky C, no, I do not dare to go on EVA and get a flying low sample because I'm <laughs> I'm at least vaguely trying to be realistic in this career. Like, for example, sending up the test flight of Eagle One instead of just sending somebody up because I knew it would be fine. Um, not EVAing at 138 kilometers to get flying high science. Not EVAing down here to get flying low science. Wing walking is a thing, but we ain't gonna do it. We have Splashdown. That's quite a lot of splashing. But let's go ahead and recover. Alright, that better have a lot of flashing antenna icons. Yes, good. And we got a tiny bit of science. We got 2.3 million back for the capsule. And she advanced to level 1. Now, we got first EVA. 90 million. First rendezvous, 56 million. Orbital flight, one crew, 13.5 million. All right. So, we have a lot of money. I think it's time we started upgrading our science some. Although we are going to need the money for the tech unlocks, because they can be expensive. But I think we definitely need to sink some of that into R&D. Do I might do a, an LOR mission. An unmanned LOR mission, just to do this sanely. Although... I think direct ascent is fairly sane in this case, but um, I don't know. Um, I definitely want to do um, 
a film camera mission in lunar orbit and return all of that data. Uh, so that's a possibility. The other thing that I really want to do is pick this up because it has a two-year time limit. We'll certainly do it within two years, I think. Because we can, we can do it once we get Hydrolox engines. Um, especially because... Just check the tech tree. Um, yeah, because we get this, which is crucial. So this will be our upper stage. We're gonna make a we're gonna make a, a jury rigged Saturn one soon, I think. With an upper stage with one of these. But a, a, a jury rigged Saturn one centaur. An upper stage with one of these, four E ones on the first stage, and then yeah, and then a centaur up top with our all tens. Um and with that we can certainly send something on a free return. Um, so yeah, that just requires, but we can launch our, we should be able to launch our, um, our lunar orbital mission using the tech we have, all Carolox and hypergolic upper. Um, the J2 is in the note after that, yes, that's correct. Um, the sad part is that the J2, so you get both the 200,000 pound force and I think the 230 KLBF one at the same node at the moment. We sort of went back and forth on whether to put the 200 KLBF one back a node. Um, oh, and I can unlock some more. can unlock more things. None of these are actually touching our science because we... Oh, whoops. Launch into plane of target 18 hours. Alright, so this will probably be another night launch, which I really don't like, but it is what it is. All right, let's look at all this. This all looks fine. This does not look so fine. Um, because that upper... Yeah. Um, we need to be a above 150 kilometer perigee. Uh, try that. We're going to have to down pitch a fair amount, but we have plenty of delta V, so we should be fine. Alright, I think those numbers make sense. Engage to autopilot. Man, so close to an evening launch, but no. Now, if we really were keen here, we would try to launch to intercept, but um, we're not going to. we go. Alright, let's silhouette ourselves so I can see.
Now, what I do not like is the fact that um, our relative inclination is 0.3 degrees, which is going to be a pain to correct once we're near orbit. I can try steer correctively, but that may make things even worse. And we have plenty of delta v. We have like 400. We have 417 meters per second, so we're fine. The an alarm for uh, 12 days before SOI change, so that we really get a close look. We still have plenty of propellant, so we still have plenty of delta v. Um, okay. Go back to Space Center and prep our launch. Let's wait until the rollout's complete. Okay. Now, I'm going to save just in case. And we're going to launch Eagle 3. Francis Boyd. Now, we have to perform a rendezvous, a spacewalk, and a duration. Uh, the duration record doesn't care about altitude. First EVA doesn't care, just a minute on 150, perigee, that's fine. Where's orbital flight crude? All right, periapsis above 190 and apogee below 535. We'll be able to do that, that's fine, for a day and a half. We're going to be up here for th three, so whatever. Uh, are the pumps on? The pumps are on. All right, so. We want to target um, Selene 5, lunar, f lunar plane check, set as target. All right, launch into plane of target 18 hours. All right, so this will probably be three hours to go, two hours to go, one hour to go, 50, 40, 30, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Okay, five minutes to go. We'll come out of warp. And let's look at... Okay, so that's completed. And for our three-day record, how long do we have to go? Another day and a half. That's fine. All right, SAS to off. Let's reorient. We are near... Ugh. Well, that's fine. We already... Com we already completed that other thingy, so even if we lower our perigee now, it should be fine. So now Francis Boyd is going to attempt to rendezvous with this thingy. The uh, spent stage from, I believe, the Cythera 1 mission. Now, ideally, we dock with something, but we don't have docking ports. We're just going to do a rendezvous. 
I would have her get out and like look at it and stuff, but sadly we that would reset the crew duration record, I believe. So we can't do that. All right, so I'm going to keep this part visible where the that is. Oh, I think I yeah, I can right click it. Awesome. Forgot about that. So basically, in case you were wondering what was going on cuz I didn't actually explain this. What I did was I basically used MechJeb's home and transfer tool just to tell us when we would approximately be in sync. Then I manually created the uh, transfer orbit because MechJeb wasn't quite doing it right. Alright, now we're going to clean things up. So, we still have that thing targeted. Let's look at home and transfers again. One day, ten hours. Alright, let's try messing around with the Delta V here. There, that's a pretty good rendezvous, actually. It's pretty decent. That wasn't hard, was it, MacJep? Wrong way. Okay, what's our separation there? 1.4 kilometers. Interesting, MacJep didn't find that one. Relative speed, 160... Alright, so we're definitely going to keep that node. Um... Hopefully that doesn't... Oh good, it's far enough that that contract will complete anyway. So, yep, we're going to go ahead and warp to that. Um, where's the maneuver? I want it to let me warp to maneuver. Oh well. Um, so we'll warp manually. Five, four, three, two, one, twenty-three, twenty-two, twenty-one, twenty, nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fifteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten. Four hours to go. Three hours to go. Two hours to go. One hour to go. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Okay, five minutes to go. We'll come out of warp. And let's look at... Okay, so that's completed. And for our three-day record, how long do we have to go? Another day and a half. That's fine. All right, SAS to off. Let's reorient. Oh. We're going to get lunar heat shields in 52 days. We're going to get some very nice things very soon. Well, not that soon, but soon enough. 
Uh, and then finally, 165 days after we get lunar heat shields, we will get um, we'll get our f <laughs> at long last our first rocketry upgrade node, and then we'll get Hydrolox engines a little while after that. Um, and then we'll get all these other things. Man, really need to increase the research rate. But I need to keep enough funds in reserve for unlocking all the expensive things that we're going to unlock. So let's go ahead and launch our EVA, um, which is also going to be a rendezvous mission. So fingers crossed. I'm also going to duplicate this just in case it fails. Oh, and we might need a couple more pilots. Uh, Frances Boyd. She seems like a good pick. She has low stupidity and high courage. She seems like an excellent pilot. Um, so, thus far we've only been flying Ludmila. Um, I'm fly Francis next time. Um, so that was another ten thousand, another ten million dollars. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, let me quickly just make sure we don't have any expiring contracts. Um, these are all records. First com satellite doesn't expire until 1954, late 53, mid 54, early 54, mid 53, mid 53, mid 54, and that's already on the way. Um, so we do have to launch our lunar landing mission fairly soon. but not today. So that contract will complete anyway. So, yep, we're going to go ahead and warp to that. Um, where's the maneuver? I want it let me warp to maneuver. Oh well. Um, so we'll warp manually. Five, four, three, two, one, twenty-three, twenty-two, twenty-one, twenty, nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fifteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten. Four hours to go. Three hours to go. Two hours to go. One hour to go. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Okay, five minutes to go. We'll come out of warp. And let's look at... Okay, so that's completed. And for our three-day record, how long do we have to go? Another day and a half. That's fine. All right, SAS to off. Let's reorient. We are near uh, well, that's fine we already com we already completed that other thingy, so even if we lower our perigee now, it should be fine. So now Francis Boyd is going to attempt to rendezvous with this thingy the a uh, spent stage from. I believe the Scythera 1 mission. Now ideally we dock with something, but we don't have docking ports. We're just going to do a rendezvous. I would have her get out and like look at it and stuff, but sadly we that would reset the crew duration record, I believe. So we can't do that. All right.
right, so I'm going to keep this part visible where the that is. Oh, I think.